development of pursuing the idea of urbanization all over the world. <coughs> but let me just take you through a basic uh, uh, calculation. The question is how big should settlements be? Is meg are mega cities inevitable? Are big cities like uh, Manila, Bangkok, you know, Jakarta, are they inev inevitable? Why is it that we, we still think of it that way? Okay. Let's look at the arithmetic. If we have a population, world population of 6.5 billion people, <clears throat> and the total arable land that's cultivable, cultivable land, minus forests, minus rivers, minus lakes, minus deserts, minus the sea, net plantable land. We have only 19.5 million square kilometers of plantable agricultural land. So let's express what is the total floor area versus the land? Okay, get a picture in your mind. What are we talking about? And if we assume 35 square meters per person, by the way, in Singapore, my extrapolation is there are no statistics available. The extrapolation is that we have 50 square meters per person. Right? So if you have a family of four, you will have 200 square meters of floor space. Don't confuse floor space with land area or with road space. Pure floor space. This is floor space. Okay, this building, add up all the floors in this building, is the total floor area of this building. Add up all the floor space in this city, then that's the total floor area of this city period. Okay, so what does it amount to? It's only 1.16% of the arable land. And, it, and that is assuming the buildings are only one story, which is absurd. If they are two story, then it's 0.5. Okay. In other words, the physical footprint of floor space buildings on arable land is negligible. So why the hell are we building big cities for? Somebody goof, right? Somebody's manipulating the, 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 the notions. Somebody's manipulating the consciousness. The land use planner for <coughs> EU gave a talk at the National University. I asked him this question. In European Union, you are the chief planner for land use in European Union. Do you have floor space sensors in European Union? He says no. Perhaps only Germany and perhaps only France. To me, this is the deep flaw. If you do not have readily available uh, floor space sensors, then you cannot decide where to put your floor space. In other words, planning is a bogus. That means statistically, you don't know what you're doing. So my criticism of the planning profession is that it is flawed from day one. And so I, I checked the planning literature over the last 100 years, looked at all the studies, all the methodological uh, uh, processes in planning, land use planning, and floor space index does not exist. Okay, so this is damn serious, right? When we did the master plan for Kampong Bugis, we, did, we had to do the calculation. We had to do the calculation and uh, the chief planner then asked me, how did you arrive at this? I said, these are the statistics we, we had to extrapolate in between because we cannot find the real source. And he admitted to me, there is no real source. So my, my reply to him, the chief planner then, is then how do you plan? So there's a, there's a serious problem here. So, once you rethink this whole question of where should you put the settlements, then urbanization is natural. This is how you should you should put your settlements. So so the each settlement would be one kilometer one, one kilometer circle, right? And and you just dispute that. You put a highway to connect that. And then your densities can vary, but never more than one kilometer because that's a walking distance. And that means that you don't need to use the car. Therefore, you can have a, you know, the kind of community, the kind of social relations that are considered to be positive. Children can walk to school. You know, old people and young and, and children can interact very freely in a traffic-free environment. Not that there are no cars. Of course, you can have cars, but you don't have to use it to the extent that you do. Right? So that's the, the, the story. And this is what it might look like. The densities can be very different. Right? We can have. We can have plantations, we can have... Every settlement is surrounded by vegetables, 
<coughs> so that you have your fresh, organically grown stuff. And, uh, <coughs> and beyond that, you have your, your big plantations. Okay. So, urbanization is therefore the landscape of distributed power and choice. This is the politics of urbanization. Right? This kind of politics means that the potential for autonomy is very great. Which means that when you have autonomous power, uh, then you will have the possibility of fragmented centralized politics. That means coalition politics. That means democracy. Okay? Uh, we'll talk about more about that. It's very controversial. So this is how the, the, the one kilometer circles can be disposed, it can be very packed together, <coughs> but not space apart. I mean, it depends on situation. That's how it might look like. At low density, it could be 8,000 people, so 2,000 uh, 2, per segment. Right? 2,000 per segment, why? Because that will support one school. <coughs> and the medium in high. Okay, then what happened? <coughs> I published an article in 2008. In 2009, <coughs> I went to Indonesia at the request of the Indonesian authorities. And on December the 7th, 2009, this is the SMS message sent to me by uh, Dr. Tatak, who is the uh, Deputy Minister for the Ministry of Disadvantaged Regions, confirming that as of 7th December, his minister will launch the Integrated Rural Development Program, applying urbanization as the model. So it's as fast as that. Right? So right now, I've been assigned, uh, uh, this is the, 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 the report, right? Uh, model beta desa. <coughs> Adoption of urbanization in Indonesia. Alright, so this is the minister. Tata wanted to come here today, but uh, this is Tata. He wanted to come here today, but he's delayed, so he cannot come. So this is the, the, the West Java. This is Jakarta. Uh, this is the Sukabumi province. So I've been assigned this uh, 80,000 hectares to, 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 to urbanize. So this is the but what I realized is that urbanization doesn't happen overnight. The incubation period is enormously long. The issues that are being discussed, being organized now in Sukabumi is airport. How are you going to bring you know, people into this area with terrible roads? All right? How are you going to get investors to come in uh, without proper transportation, airports, seaport, uh, infrastructure, energy? All these issues are, are, are ultimately both planning and financial issues. So these are being sorted out. In, 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 uh, in the highlands, coffee highlands of, of Vietnam, this is the uh, a project that uh, we, we, we put forward and is under discussion, it's been modified because the land titles have been uh, changed but, but uh, the idea is the same. And these are the kind of compact houses that uh, you know, eight houses share, share, share one courtyard. Eight families share one tree, and so on. And then you can multiply. Okay, to go back to this question, uh, my students, my students ask me, why, why circle? Why circle? Can it be square? Can it be triangle? Can it be, you know? I said, you know, we we all human beings, right? We have the same geometry, you know? head, box, you know, shoulder, hands, body. But we are all different, right? Why are we different? Our characters are different. The geometry is the same. So I mean the obsession with geometrical distinction or difference is I think misplaced. If you have better communities and, and better social relations, environmental relations, that's your character. So your, 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 your geometry may be the same, but your character will be very different. Okay, this is a discussion with uh, Sri Lanka, Minister for Planning. Okay. This is a discussion with Minister for Housing. And I've just, uh, last week, two weeks ago, been assigned this area. It's 100 kilometers from here. <coughs> right, this, is, this is Kilinochi, this is uh, Malai where which was the last map. Right, this is the critical area for urbanization because one million people have been displaced in this area. And they need to be rehoused. So the economic potential is enormous, right? This is a tourism area, so it's 
this this big commonly port which has got deep water. So this is this is the area which I'm currently under discussion and uh, we will have to make a trip to Sri Lanka to discuss the details. Okay, this is the earlier trip which was <coughs> to identify a particular site in Putalam, by the way Putalam, Putalam is here. Which is a Tamil Muslim area, right? So, so these are the local officials uh, which were which went there. This is the architect from the Sri Lanka Institute of Architects. This is the uh, Brigadier General in charge of resettlement. Uh, this is the personal assistant to the president. Uh, myself, and this is uh, from Mercy Relief. From Mercy Relief. Unfortunately, uh, in fact, the project was delayed because they passed away in the Mercy uh, mission in the Philippines. So the project was on hold. Because he passed away, but we, we are in the process of trying to revive the project. So this is the project, fishing village, uh, very swampy area, aquaculture, and, and so on. So this is the, the, we are ready to go once the <coughs> the bigger picture is clear. Now I want to talk about something very interesting about what what is the most important. Well, I, I guess as architects we are all very concerned about. What kind of architecture, right? <clears throat> and we all want to be very progressive. We want to be uh, cutting edge, kind of leading in the in the in the directions which, which architecture should go. I made a presentation this to him, who is the minister for tourism in Vietnam, in Hanoi. Okay, I propose to build a five-star hotel with a, a cultural village uh, to, to resuscitate 36 crafts that are dying. And when I presented this project to him, you know, tears came to his eyes. And he said to me, you have addressed three of our main concerns. Number one, that <clears throat> our identity is in, uh, in danger of being lost because of modernization and industrialization. Secondly, you are giving my compatriots, villages, a chance to make a living, otherwise they will have to go and work in the factories. And thirdly, you are preserving the cultural heritage uh, which they are the craft. <coughs> so for these three reasons, he says, he approved the scheme. And he said to me across the table, he pointed to me, he said, you go to Hue, which is the cultural capital of Vietnam, and you do the tourism master plan. Yes, sir. So we went. And this is the signing ceremony in, held in the Istana in Singapore, witnessed by two prime ministers. Never heard of this kind of thing, right? No tender. <laughs> Not an appointment. <laughs> okay. So we are still working on the, on the tourism master plan. And because of urbanization, we added urbanization into the tourism master plan. And they are so happy with it because they say you are giving my rural folks a chance to have a bite of the cherry. Otherwise, they will lose out in the tourism because tourism is basically city center. Okay, and Hue is a cultural city. It's a cultural city, and it's a UNESCO heritage site. So a lot of the old buildings, the palaces, and everything are, <coughs> are being preserved. So it's city centric. You know? What? What livelihood potentials are there for the people in the countryside? So we, we created this idea of rural settlements. And we are going to sell houses. This is the real estate part of it. We're going to sell houses. We're going to sell 50,000 houses to rich or middle class Vietnamese who have money, who are terribly worried that their children are growing up absent. Lost the culture. I went to the, the Hue Festival uh, four months ago, and I was impressed by the fact that many families coming from Hanoi and from Ho Chi Minh City brought their little kids along, right? And they were enthralled. The kids were terribly excited, and the families were very excited to reconnect with the, with the traditional Vietnamese culture. But what I want to say is that this is modern architecture, okay? So if we think that this is just traditional stuff. It's traditional stuff in the modern context. 
to resolve some of the problems of what they call alienated labor. When you work in a factory, you're just a, you're just a robot. Your, your, whatever you have in your mind is irrelevant. You are not a person, you are just a button. Okay? So this is where the, the, the resuscitation, the reconnection between the head, the heart and the hand is a very important modern project. We have to look at it differently. 